This next section is on the evolution of behavior of sex as well as between different sexes within a species. So you should be able to discuss in terms of adaptive value and evolutionary history, the reproductive investment and sexual conflict between sexes and parental care and mating systems that are used in different species as well. So there's a big difference in how much males and females invest in reproduction. From many reptile and amphibians, there's practically no parental investment by either males or females. In many bird species, there's a fairly equal investment by both males and females. And in many mammals, females have a disproportionate investment in both reproduction and uh, child rearing. And if you watch the link for uh, below the kittens there, there's a humorous video about why parenting is important. So enjoy that. But if we look at the biological definitions of females and males, it has to do with the production of gametes. And females produce larger, less mobile gametes. And males produce smaller, far more motile gametes. And this is the beginning stage of the differences in terms of parental investment. The mother's material is contributing to the offspring in a much greater, to a much greater extent than the males and this, in mammals at least, carries through throughout most of um, f uh, everything from fertilization with fetal development and child rearing. So there are evolutionary differences in the behaviors of males and females, and this largely falls back to the extent of energy that each one is going to need to make, both in terms of the sexual component of reproduction as well as the behavioral component after reproduction has taken place. And so for fertilization, it tends to be a more energy-involved process for females. In mammals, they have lactation after birth and then take part in most of the child rearing after birth as well. Although in some cases there is an extreme effort during the mating process prior to fertilization for the males and then the behaviors of those males will tend to be different. So usually males are going to compete for females and females are going to tend to have fewer mates. And if we look at this graph about fruit fly mating patterns, we see that the females are in blue and the males are in green. That for females, regardless of how many mates they have, they can only produce eggs so quickly. And so whether they have one, two, three mates, or potentially even more mates than that, their reproductive output is about the same, around 60 offspring per female fruit, fruit fly. However, with the males, the larger the number of mates, the more offspring they have because each female with which they have sexual contact creates an entire new set of offspring. They're not slowed down at all by needing to have the investment in developing or laying the eggs. And so if you look at this, pause the video while you answer the question about the differences in reproductive output. And hopefully you realize that it was number one, that males are, have a two times greater offspring output, 120 to 60, when they have three mates. And so there are different points at which there's the potential for exploiting the differences. One of them is at the point of mating, and another is at the point of parental care towards the offspring. And again, generally, in many species, it is the female who is going to have a greater energy investment in mating and also generally going to have a greater amount of parental care for the offspring. And so the females need to be more choosy. The males are going to tend to be less selective in terms of the females with which they reproduce and are going to tend to try to have access to a larger number of females. So with the example of birds, birds don't really have a significant gestation internally. They lay eggs and then 
they just ate the eggs by sitting on the nest and in many species the males and females take turns and so the reproductive investment is about the same and with many birds their behaviors are not going to be appreciably different between male and female. The female birds also, not being mammals, don't have lactation and so they're not the only parent who is capable of raising the young. Both the male and the female can go get worms or insects or whatever the diet is for those birds and feed the offspring. So you're going to tend to see different patterns in birds that both take care of their young than in birds that don't and in species that don't have equal parental investment. And then with fish and amphibians, they often have external fertilization, external gestation, and really neither parent is terribly involved and neither parent is terribly choosy about which partners they have. They are going to tend to be less, to show less selection in terms of which mate they choose than many other species. And so the extent of the energy investment in reproduction is going to cause some of these differences, but so is paternal uncertainty. The mother always knows that the offspring are hers, but for the father, there's a degree of uncertainty. He can never be quite certain that the offspring were really fathered by him and not some other male. And so that's going to affect, for many species, how the males both regard their offspring and how they interact with and try to find females. <clears throat> and so males and females are going to be vulnerable at different stages. And that too is going to influence how they behave. And so generally the sex that is investing a greater amount will be more discriminating, more choosy, will work harder in making sure that they're getting the best mate. Whereas the sex that invests less is going to tend to not care so much about which mate they find, but is going to have as many mates as possible and is going to compete with the other of their sex, generally the other males, to get access to females. And so there's a completely opposite viewpoint in terms of reproductive success for males and females. And so sometimes the males are choosy. In the case of the cricket on top there, and this is a link to a video if you'd like to watch it, the cricket it will often ejaculate almost half of its body mass during one session and frequently dies after this initial mating. So it's extremely important for the male that he gets a good female because he's not going to have another chance. Whereas sometimes they're not choosy and with the antechnus, which is a little uh, mouse-like marsupial that lives in Australia, they will tend to not be choosy at all. What they'll do instead is have as many mates as they can They'll be, I guess, a little choosy because they're going to invest a lot of time in each mate, but they're going to go from one mate to the next to the next in fairly rapid succession. So sometimes it's more important to make sure that they have mates than to make sure that they have access to the best mates. And so pause it for a little bit while you think about this question and come back for the answer. And hopefully you realize that the female squirrel being both female and a mammal is going to have both the greatest investment in terms of fertilization, gestation, and child rearing. So the female squirrels are going to be the most choosy. And then there are different ways of getting a mate. If you're going to be involved in courtship or you're going to be highly choosy in terms of trying to find a good mate. And so the different factors for mate selection are courtship, um, and each of these pictures, except for the peacock, are links to videos. So courtship dances and songs and birds are things that males will do to show their fitness to try to get good females. The females are going to be very discriminating. They're going to want only the best dancers and the best singers because this inf shows that these are highly fit males, that they're able to sing and dance and make themselves available to predators and yet still able to successfully reproduce. Sometimes they'll give gifts and in this 
example of the spider here, um, and you can again watch the video, the males bring gifts to the insect, usually wrapped up dead insects, and offer them to the female to show, look, you know, if I can get this good big fly for you, I'm a good mate. And the female will choose from amongst the best gifts. Sometimes it's resource control. Squirrels are territorial. You can see here that the springbok is highly territorial. Rams are as well. And so if the males can force off other males and keep access to the territory for themselves, then they also have access to the females that live there. And of course, we all know that looks are important. And so the peacock tail, as you saw in the video Evolution Y Sex, is an extremely important part of mating because the length of the tail and the number of eye spots are strong indicators of success for the males. And so again, pause and think about this one and come back for the answer. And hopefully you realize that number one, courtship rituals, is the factor where singing would be involved. This has nothing to do with resource or a gift, I guess other than the gift of song, uh, but really that's a courtship ritual.